light and fire and screaming. Um, no, uh, no, it wasn't the beginning. Uh, sorry, my head's in a mess. <clears throat> Getting ahead of myself. Uh, let's try this again. In the beginning, there was darkness. The endless, desolate, unrelenting silence of space. The flame drive had started to fluctuate a few days before. Oh, we could have coped. Like crews have coped over the decades as the drive has aged and adapted over the years. And then one day last week, the call came over the intercom. Captain, code 15, violation in the isolation wing. Well, I leapt to my feet. Instinct taking over as muscle memory kicked in. Active quarantine procedures across decks 12 through 15, I shouted as that damn klaxon kicked in. Lock the doors, deploy protection and seal all bulkheads. Focus internal cameras on isolation. <laughs> on the screen, clutching a battered straw hat on top of his head, there was a man running for his life. Who's that? The bridge officer looked at me, eyes slightly panicked. Uh, I don't know, is he a doctor? We've only got doctors on board. I jabbed the intercom. This is Captain Albrighton. What the hell are you doing in isolation? Saving your life, came the cry as the man raced from left to right. From what? The man skidded to a halt. Using a battered old umbrella, he tilted the camera towards the back of the gantry. From that! And even though the klaxon rang through my ears, as it did for the months of darkness that followed, the world fell suddenly silent. My ship was cracking apart. Thin spider webs of gold spread across the gantry as the man's eyes widened in fear. Evacuate now, Captain! Your flame drive's been infected! I've stopped most of it, but ah! He was gone. How can it be so silent when the klaxon sounds so loud? And then there was movement. All at once I looked down at my hand and saw I'd ordered emergency one. Stasis pods slid out into space. Tendrils of life support cables keeping them together. Did I do that? I heard myself barking orders I thought I'd never have to give as the bridge emptied and the plates under my feet began to shudder. As the crew abandoned their stations, one final glance at my screen told me I was going nowhere yet. <laughs> Evacuation of the isolation deck had failed. The man was holding open a door with his umbrella while shouting orders at my doctors with an authority I hadn't heard since cadet school. That's it, he shouted as the deck shook. Get the stasis patients into the locker room. They'll be safe there. I grabbed his arm. There's 50 stasis tubes to move. Are you mad? That's a cupboard. They'll never fit. <laughs> Captain Albrighton, he said, quickly doffing his hat. It's okay. I parked in there. There's room. <sighs> Why did I trust him? The fractures. I've stopped the source of the infection, so the ship is safe, he said. There was a crash, and the man's eyes widened. Or not, he was getting frustrated. The evacuation! It's too slow! I, I, I just need some more time! I looked at the unknown doctor, and it was then I knew this moment had always been coming. How long do you need? I asked. Then I spoke the final words I knew I'd ever say. In the beginning, there was a light, and there was a fire. And I remembered to stop screaming as he told me it would be all right. As I slipped into a coma, he held my hand and told me I'd be fine. I'm not sure where I am.
He's sitting at the end of my bed, hands resting on the absurd handle of his umbrella. Ah, you're a weak, he beamed. What happened? You burned the infection out of the ship by overriding your own flame drive. The flames would have spread in seconds, but you told me to expand the patient's stasis field so it covered the deck. Clever. I prop myself up, my vision slowly coming into focus. You slowed down time. You slowed the fire. Enough to get the rest of the patients to safety. But I'm afraid the flames caught up with you as you ran. I'm sorry. I run my fingers across my left cheek and know without looking that, um, that I'm different. There are so many times, Captain, that I can't save everyone. But because of you, on that one day, I did. So I stayed, watched over you, made sure you were okay for the months that you rested. My ship, the patients, all safe. But I had to bring you somewhere a little more um, advanced. I look around and for a moment, I can't speak. This this kid. It's impossible. It's a little in your future. Yes. But your scar will last a lifetime, I'm afraid. I can take you somewhere else to try to... No. I cut him off, knowing I'd be rude to, but uh, no, no. It's okay. I'll keep it. He frowns, and without knowing him, I know he's concerned. Are you sure? I am. He smiles as he stands. We go through our lives, one day at a time, Captain. Sometimes it's worth thanking the scars that made us. We all carry them. Some of them are quiet, kept close to our hearts for only us to see. Others carry them proudly as a message to the world. I look at my bandaged hands. A message that no matter how hard the struggle, I survived. I swing my legs to the side of the bed and try to stand, but stagger back as soon as I do. The man catches me as I fall. <laughs> Careful, he said. Remember. One day at a time, one foot in front of the other. That's all life is. One more deep breath as I compose myself and stand, leaning on him for support. <sighs> a new day, I breathe. A new beginning. You really are the doctor aren't you? Nice to meet you properly, Captain. He smiles. Joy, I smile back. Call me Joy. Mm -hmm.